Thank you, Mr. Neal. I'd like to recognize the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Hearn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for far too long, unelected bureaucrats and D.C. politicians have attacked the family-run farms, energy producers, and manufacturing companies across the heartland, what some in Washington would consider to be the flyover country. These same politicians have never set a foot in a place like Oklahoma, so again, I, I appreciate everybody being here. But uh, to see what's happened with you all invested your, your lives and what you're doing, uh, your story's fourth, fifth generation for your time in Iraq and defending the freedoms of this country, it's great for everybody to hear in D.C. of what America looks like. As many of us represent 800,000 in our districts across America, it's great to see everybody what they're doing. Many Oklahomans asked me, having spent 35 years in business when I first started running, what surprised me the most about being in Washington, D.C. And I resp my response was then is the same as it is now. It's how many people talk about things they know absolutely nothing about. And what you all do and our witnesses do when they come to these hearings is to tell us what's really going on with the policies that are being produced by the federal government. You know, as we see what's happening in the last two years, as we've seen a border crisis, we see it on TV every single day. Regardless if we want, anybody wants to admit it or not, it's a crisis. Economic crisis, you all feel the experience of inflation. A labor shortage crisis, you all have explained that. A supply chain crisis, we talk about what we want to do with China, but policies coming out of the administration right now are completely contradictory to that. Energy crisis, you all are experiencing this every single day. So despite the last two years of what we've seen in this economy, this administration has chosen to stand by their tax and spend agenda that leaves everyday American taxpayers with less money in their pockets. When the federal government spends more, here's a fact, the American taxpayer has less. Before Joe Biden took office, Oklahoma's economy was thriving. We saw significant sectors of our economy, from agricultural to manufacturing to energy, create new job opportunities. Now restrictive trade policies, as was mentioned, and unnecessary tax increases are limiting the ability for farmers, energy producers, and manufacturers to compete in the global marketplace. I really want to, I had a question here, but I really just want to say something. You really, as you all listen to what we say and what I've experienced now being in Congress for four years, really at the heart of the whole conversation is with us in Washington, D.C. versus everyday Americans that we are out in the heartland is really trying to ascertain who does it better. You as the individuals creating the jobs, the workers trying to take care of themselves and their family, or Washington, D.C. that wants all of your taxpayer dollars, and for us to decide who should get what in a targeted environment. And that, that's really the, that's the decision process at the highest level that's going on right now. Who can do it better, Washington, D.C. or everyday Americans? So my, my question is, is something very simple. Which is better? Leaving the taxpayer dollars, we have a baseline we have to meet. National defense, secure our nation, as our founders described, leaving as much money in the certainly the lower middle class income uh, pockets so that they can do the basic needs like supply child care and health care and go find the right job and not depend on the federal government. Our success should be measured by how many people we get out of poverty, not how many people are on Medicaid <laughs> expansion or other programs in the federal government. And as a person who grew up on food stamps and, you know, whether people want to hear this or not that may be sitting at this table, I have experienced it. I've experienced the way out. And my success story was not that I'm still on welfare, is that I got off of welfare. And I experienced the American dream. And that's what we're here all about today is to try to ascertain. I do believe in the heart of heart of everybody here, it's about my members that are here, my friends that are here, is that we all have the same goal in mind. Is everybody become successful? of the American dream. It's the pathway of getting there that we can't agree on. So with that, I would love to start. Ms. Payne, you actually alluded to this, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this as well. Representative, very well said. I was about moved to tears over here, and this farm girl doesn't <laughs> cry very often, but. <clears throat> In thinking back whenever I was running the Oklahoma National Stockyards and the employees that we had there. It was a very diverse group. And some of the challenge, some of it is uh, because it's very, well, as Brian mentioned earlier, it's a dirty job. So not everybody wants to do it. But we, uh, the diversity within our staff uh, was everything from obviously the redheaded female. Uh, <laughs> we had Army veterans that worked on staff and we also uh, utilized a lot of justice involved. And seeing, especially with the justice involved, 
being able to offer them an opportunity to break their cycle, to have a job that meant something at the end of the day, and to be treated fairly was one of the most rewarding things I've ever seen in my life. And that is part of this American dream. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter if you're a farmer, rancher, steel, oil and gas, or if you've ran into trouble in your past. It doesn't define who you are, but America gives that opportunity, and that is incredible. Within that, you make difficult choices of what, uh, on, the, on taxing us, but we need to be thinking about, as we move forward, how to, to, everybody deserves a chance to make it. So thank you all. Thank you. Are you back?